Hi, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you clicking on this video. By the title of the video, I can understand if you are thinking, water, what is the big deal? <laughs> I hope that after you watch the video, I will have answered that question. From a human perspective, water helps digest our food and then transports the nutrients across our body. It also helps regulate our body temperature. Staying hydrated will keep us warm or cool enough to suit our surroundings. But Contaminated water and poor sanitation are linked to the transmission of diseases and absent or inappropriately managed water exposes us to preventable health risks. And with that being said, see where I am going? This is an orchid channel and the correlation of what water does for us as humans matches what water does for our orchids. Let's get back to the human side of it. <laughs> Every human being is different, can tolerate different variables based on where they grew up or are currently living. I can remember taking baths in water and having mosquito larvae as company. I have probably ingested a few funky bacteria along the way as well while growing up in Kenya. Maybe I was more resistant to disease because of contaminated water than others would be, and the same goes with orchids. Some orchids can handle low quality water because they are a product of mass production, while others not so much. Having access to pure water is a luxury these days, and if you're growing your orchids in an area where your tap water is below 100 parts per million, you are super lucky and this video pretty much ends for you here. Keep watching though, because what if you move and then your water is above 200 parts per million? What then? What about finally getting some rain for your orchids? We always hear that rain is the best source of water for orchids because out in nature, yada, yada, yada. But did you know that not all rain is good rain? On my channel, I use a term often. I speak of clean water. Because of the different variables of water sources, when I say clean, I mean the water source with the lowest parts per million that you have available. Some would say pure water, so let us define the word pure. Pure, according to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, as it pertains to water, is unmixed with any other matter, free from dust, dirt, pollutants, or debris, and or containing nothing that does not properly belong. Synonyms for pure water would be plain, purified, refined, undiluted, and unmixed. The synonyms are important because we all use different words that can mean the same thing. So if you hear someone say they use purified water or another term often used is plain water, then you know that they are using pure water. Going back to the definition as in containing nothing that does not properly belong or the water has the lowest parts per million level concentration. Water quality is one of the key components of successful orchid growing, and yet many discussions of the issue become very technical very quickly and possibly confusing. But we can all agree that the quality of water has a direct relationship with the quality of the fertilizing solution or supplements that we add to the water, which we then use on our orchids. We mix fertilizer, supplements, and water and hope to feed the plants. Unfortunately, if the pH is too high or too low, the orchids will not be able to consume all the nutrients we're giving them in the fertilizer. This can result in nutrient deficiencies even as we are pouring nutrients on the plants. So the type of water and the type of fertilizer both have an effect on the pH of the resulting fertilizer and water solution. So first of all, let's go back and define four types of water in general use for our orchids. Well, the first one would be rainwater, including melted snow. So we could call that precipitation in general, but I'm going to stick with using rainwater for this video just to keep things uniform. There's also the option of reverse osmosis water, often abbreviated by simply saying RO water. There's tap water, there's well water, and add to the list as per what you use, zero water, purified water, distilled, the list is endless. But keep in mind that whatever water it is, the information still applies. I will go over each of the ones I just mentioned separately as they present their own unique issues and challenges to us as orchid growers. The simplest water to understand is pure water in the form of rainwater or reverse osmosis water, as is in my case. Tap water and well water will have many different dissolved solids and chemicals in it. I have to add a disclaimer for what I just said about the rainwater being pure, though. So let us start with rainwater. The purity of rainwater or melted snow this day and age depends a lot on several factors. 
the time span between rainfall, how long is it raining for, how heavy is the downpour, whether it's just a drizzle or a deluge, pollutants in the air, the runoff before it collects in a tub for storage, your location, a city being more susceptible to impurities in the rain as opposed to living out in the countryside or even if one were to live in a tropical rainforest. Also important about rainwater or any precipitation for that matter that you're going to be storing is the temperature of the water collected. So being mindful of these influences which could taint the quality of the rainwater that we collect and use for our orchids is of utmost importance. As an example and based on my climate, I have little to no rain for seven months of the year. If it were to rain in that time frame, then the first rain would be dirty, as in it brings down a lot of the pollutants in the air along with it as it cleans the atmosphere. It may rain for less than an hour and this water would be useless to use. It is usually a slight drizzle. Very rarely does it rain heavily during this time of seasonal drought. Now I will have my orchids outside if it does rain during this time period in the hopes that it may be of some value to my orchids and that it rains long enough. But I do then flush my pots out with RO water depending on how long it rained and how much it rained. Trust me, that looks really weird to my neighbors seeing me water my orchids after it rained. <laughs> But the reason I do this is because this first rain is not clean. In some cases, it is also called acid rain because of all the gunk in the atmosphere that comes with it. If it were to be a continuous downpour of rain for two hours, then within the first hour, the gunk has poured through the pots. And the second hour is when the rain is clean enough to serve as good rain. So I hope that makes sense. Then when it comes to the seasonal rain around fall winter, in my area the temperatures are too cold for me to expose the orchids to those long extended rains, but I collect the water, let it warm up before using it to flush my pots. However, before I do that, I make sure to check the pH and the TDS of the water collected. And this is something that I highly recommend everyone do because often we hear that rainwater is the best for orchids because that is what they get out in nature. But we assume that our rainwater is pure and because of our environment or location, chances are it is definitely not pure. Where the orchids live in nature, that is as pure as it can get. If one were not to think about the pollution in the air that has increased in the past hundred years after the Industrial Revolution. But the Amazon rainwater or the rain falling in the jungles of Borneo is still purer than any rainwater that we collect in our backyards. Moving on from the rain, the next purest kind of water that I'm using is reverse osmosis water. So reverse osmosis is a form of water purification which removes dissolved solids from water. Because it has no dissolved solids, it doesn't have anything to buffer the effect of fertilizer added to it. RO water is a form of pure water just like rainwater. Fertilizers that contain urea as a nitrogen source when used with pure water will become too acidic and will tend to drive the pH of the orchid media down. Remember that part because I will circle back on that thought. Moving on to tap water, that varies greatly across the world. In some parts of the world, the tap water is pretty good, low in dissolved solids and quite suitable for use with orchids. However, that is not a luxury for all locations. And in my case, the tap water has too many dissolved solids, which measure at 250 to 350 parts per million and a ridiculous pH of nine to 10. One advantage with municipal water is that many water companies must publish their water quality reports online. In my case, there is no such information available online and I would have to go to take a sample to get tested so that I can get a breakdown of what is in my tap water, which I have not done because it comes with a cost and well, I have RO water. So for my own curiosity, getting that information can wait. But even when I had to use tap water because of technical reasons when my RO system was malfunctioning in the summer of 2021, even mixing half my tap water with half my harvested RO water and reducing the pH accordingly, my orchids suffered and roots were damaged in the process. So there is something toxic in that water. Toxic for the orchids, not for me per se. But let me just point this out. 
If your tap water is ideal for use with your orchids, please let it stand for at least 4 hours before use, preferably 24 hours, because tap water has chlorine in it, and directly from the tap into the pots, that is not a good thing long term. Letting the water stand for an extended period of time will achieve two things. The chlorine will evaporate and the water has time to warm up to room temperature. Another thing, tap water TDS will vary from day to day. That is why I say parts per million values ranging from 250 to 300 parts per million in my case. So if you are using your tap water for your orchids, check the TDS every single time before adding any fertilizer. Moving on to well water, who the chemical composition of well water is unique to the well it is drawn from. In order to determine what is in the well water, it should be tested before used on orchids. Once the makeup of the water is understood, the same rules apply as they would with tap water. Check the parts per million and the pH before use. The concentration of whatever is in well water will increase if there has not been any precipitation for an extended period of time. And then one day, it rains heavily, and that changes, also improves the quality of the well water, but maybe only for a short period of time. Those variables can happen on a daily basis. For that reason, keep an eye out for the parts per million and the pH of the well water from jump before adding anything to your orchids, if need be. In the case of tap water or well water being too high in the pH and there is no addition of fertilizer or supplements that will reduce that pH automatically, use pH down to bring the pH down to a level that is suitable for orchids, which is usually 7 if you're not using any fertilizer or supplements. 7 is a great margin, especially if we're just flushing using well water or tap water and not actually using any fertilizer. So then we hear the variable of hard and soft water. Let me just touch on that briefly. Hard water is water that has a high mineral content. It is formed when water percolates through deposits of limestone, chalk or gypsum, which are largely made up of calcium and magnesium carbonates, bicarbonates and sulfates. In domestic settings, hard water is often indicated by a lack of foam formation when soap is agitated in water and by the formation of lime scale in kettles, water spots on leaves in the garden if watering from above. As a general rule of thumb, water that has less than 100 parts per million of solids is good. So being that hard water is water with excess calcium and magnesium, soft water is free from those harsh minerals. And usually it has been through water softness systems. Just a note on the side, a reverse osmosis system is not a water softener. Water softeners condition the water as opposed to reverse osmosis systems which filter the water, removing contaminants and minerals in the water by using a filter. So if you're still with me, <laughs> thank you very, very much. If you're still with me, and you have hard water and you want to save money on buying distilled water and you are not sure if you should install an RO system or a water softener, let me run this by you. You can have full home RO systems installed which will provide your entire household with RO water every time you open the tap. The same can be done with water softener. If you install a water softener, it will protect the reverse osmosis system. Just to put the two into perspective, water softeners condition the water, whereas RO systems filter the water. Personally, I only have the RO system installed for the purpose of drinking water and my orchids. These are expenses that can get confusing and I hope that I cleared up the difference between the two and if not, then please address any questions in the comments. Now. When you go to measure your TDS from your tap water to assess if you have hard or soft water, then take these values into consideration. Soft water is anywhere from 0 to 60 parts per million. I like to stretch it to 100 parts per million because that is still A-OK -okay for use with orchids. Moderately hard water is 61 to 120 parts per million. And you can see how that can overlap with what I say about 100 parts per billion still being A-OK -okay for your orchids. And hard water is anything that has 120 parts per million up to 180 parts per million. Very hard water, anything above 181 parts per million. So you see, if I have a parts per million day of 250 in my tap water, I'm having a good day, but it is very hard water. 
Well, these are general levels. They may vary from country to country, municipality to municipality, but in general, these values are valid. Now, having talked about all of that and then figure out which water source will be the one that we use for our orchids or are already using, all of the above will make no sense and have no positive effect if we do not take pH into consideration when it comes to adding fertilizer into our now close to perfect water. We can ruin the whole thing by getting this wrong, so unfortunately, if the pH is too high or too low, the orchids will not be able to consume all the nutrients we're giving them in the fertilizer. This can result in nutrient deficiencies even as we are pouring good water and nutrients onto the plants. The type of water and the type of fertilizer both have an effect on the pH of the resulting fertilizer and water solution. Measuring the pH is key before watering orchids and then there are two primary factors at play when it comes to the pH the pH of the fertilizing solution and the pH of the orchid media. Once media has been in a pot with an orchid for a while, and this pinpoints organic orchid media. Once organic orchid media has been in a pot with an orchid for a while, there's a lot happening that can have an effect on the pH of that organic media. It breaks down over time and has fertilizer and water added to it, which have their own pH that leave behind residue. Testing the pH of the runoff water from a pot in regular intervals will be a good indicator of the pH in the pot. And in order to do that, the best method, in my opinion, is to soak a pot with the organic media in it for about 30 minutes with the cleanest water that you have, having checked the pH of the water before you soak the pot. And then after 30 minutes, you take that pot out and you measure the pH of the water that is left behind in the mask. And that'll give you an idea how the media is performing in the pot. And for future reference, if you were ever to hear the word leachate, that is what the water is called after soaking the media to check the pH of the pot. At the end of the day, growing in organic media, it makes sense to keep both the pH of the fertilizing solution and the pH of the orchid media within the optimal range for nutrient absorption. For most orchids that we grow, my safe pH range of the leachate should be no less than 5.8 and no higher than 7.0, depending on what the pH of the pot is. I also prefer to use synthetic pH ups or down, but that is preference, seeing as I need to get on with things, and I know that one drop of XYZ will give me XYZ pH. Growing in lecker and self-watering, I rarely have the need for pH up. So with all that being said, why are orchid-specific fertilizers asking if your water source is tap water or RO water, rainwater, or any other kind of pure water? Here is the circle back thought from earlier on. Know that your water source is important to specify when using fertilizers that require you to state what kind of water you are using. Using any source of pure water for your orchids requires a fertilizer that will have only nitric nitrogen and ammoniacal nitrogen in it because fertilizers that contain urea as a nitrogen source when used with pure water will become too acidic and will tend to drive the pH of the media in the pot down. However, when using tap water and well water, it is beneficial to have urea as a nitrogen source because of its characteristics of dropping the pH once it comes in contact with organic media. It is important to note that urea nitrogen will not be effective if the orchids are on mounts or are grown hydroponically or if the media is inorganic. That type of water has no influence in these grow methods. The focus in those instances regarding Regardless of the water being used must be on the concentration of nitric nitrogen and ammoniacal nitrogen in the fertilizer, seeing as they will be immediately available for absorption to the roots no matter which kind of water is being used to administer the fertilizer. The reason being, urea nitrogen needs time to become effective and to change into ammoniacal nitrogen in the pot when using organic media because only then will it become readily available to the orchids for absorption. So I hope I helped clear that up as to why some specialized orchid fertilizer require that you specify whether you're using tap or well water as opposed to if you're using RO or any kind of purified water. 
Now, let's get the water into the pots. <laughs> so there are different methods of administering water to your orchids based on any setup or choice of media. We can soak the pot for as long as necessary to allow the roots to absorb the water and or nutrients and supplements. We can pour the water through the pot as a form of a flush, usually not using any fertilizers or supplements, because that would be a waste of product. We can also have a permanent source of water available in form of a reservoir, as would be the case with semi-hydro or self-watering. Alternatives being settling the pot in a saucer that is always filled with water. We can also get water to our orchids by misting them as a form of increasing humidity where the orchids are growing. Spraying, as we would do on mounts, is another option. And just letting good old mother nature do her thing if temperatures permit. And let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Should you be in an environment and climate where it rains regularly and often and the temperatures are mild, adequate and beautiful, that your orchids are just there enjoying what mother nature has to provide and has provided for millennia. So I hope that this wasn't too boring of a video because yes, it was kind of a podcast style but basically some chats are just that, chats. And I sincerely hope that the information will be helpful, useful, and will untangle some of the thoughts about who's using what water and why is it working for that person and then I do the same and it's not working for me. Water quality is so, so important, as I mentioned at the start of the video, for us humans, not just to hydrate us, but also to cool us down, warm us up, transport nutrients through our system, and orchids are exactly the same. The water is there to hydrate, cool them down, warm them up if necessary, and most importantly to transport nutrients around their structures. And they can only do that if the pH and the quality of the water are adequate for what we are trying to achieve in growing these creatures that should all be hanging on a tree and we are containing them in a pot. I hope I managed to get that information across without confusing. The comments are there for a reason. Meanwhile, Dendrobium antenatum was keeping us company. If you've made it to the end of the video, I appreciate your time very, very much. I look forward to your comments. Your feedback is also appreciated. People come into the comments for additional information, other opinions, and I welcome the dialogue. Thank you so very, very much for watching and listening to this video. I appreciate it. I wish you a beautiful day. On one condition, though, that you stay safe, please. Take care. Bye.